So looking at these gas-powered wheelbarrow air compressors uh, that are so popular for field service use, you see roofers use them a lot because they need a lot of air and it's not always uh, really easy to have, you know, you need 220 to get the kind of volume and pressure of air that they need. Uh, to have 220 and then to transport a big electric compressor uh, as an electric motor to get this kind of output, you're talking about a huge motor. Uh, so that's going to be a very heavy unit to transport. Uh, farm use, these are great out in the field where you maybe don't have access to power. Service trucks, if you're on the side of the road and need tons of air, uh, you know, whether that's running an impact wrench or airing up large tires, uh, especially when you get into heavy equipment, you need a large volume of air trying to inflate, uh, you know, a heavy truck tire or heavy piece of equipment. Uh, the volume there is totally different than a car tire. Uh, so this would be use case for these and there didn't seem to be a whole lot of info out there about them, uh, you know, about general operating procedures. So I just want to kind of cover some of the more common things you need to, to watch for, do, how to operate, those types of things. So first thing, you've got a gas engine, whether it be a Honda or something else. You know, the Hondas are great engines. Uh, standard rules apply. Quality fuel in it, uh, you know, a lot of these are rated for up to E10. That would be 10% ethanol. Uh, but if possible, stay away from that. Uh, if you're using it regularly and keeping that fuel run through, nowhere near as big an issue. But if it sits very long at all, you'll start to get rust uh, from the water condensation. Uh, that is so so common with ethanol. So quality fuel is a big deal. Oil changes uh, following temperature recommendations. You know the Hondas do seem to be pretty good about even in the heat working with thinner oils. Uh, some of the other engines, if it gets to be very warm and you run a multi-weight, you know 530 or 1030 in them, uh, they will really tend to consume. The Hondas don't seem to be as bad, but if it's you know. 85 degrees plus, run a straight 30 weight and you'll have reduced oil consumption. Uh, and if you're out, you know, conversely, if you're in 20 degree weather, you know, anything below freezing, you really need to be running probably a 530, uh, a 1030 may work. But if you start to get really cold, you do need that thinner oil, especially on cold startup. If this has been sitting at the job site all night and it's five degrees out there, uh, and you start it with a straight 30 weight, there's a lot of wear, that oil is thick and does not want to flow. So think about matching your oil weight and changing during the seasons. Um, and that's also an easy way to remember to change the oil often, right? You're gonna put a lot of hours on this. Most of them do not come with an hour meter. But that's something you could add, you know, 20, 30 bucks. Uh, you could hook one up. To give yourself an idea, you know, an idea on maintenance schedule, uh, what you need to do there. The second thing to think about is you have oil in the compressor itself. And this is going to see a little rougher service life, probably the most uh, household uh, type use. You know, it's going to be industrial use. So you need to change the oil here. Almost all of them have a drain port and a fill port when you pop this vent tube out. Anything on the sight glass is a sufficient amount of oil, and you don't want to overfill really above the red dot. You can aim for center of the red dot, uh, but anything on the sight glass is good. These can, with lighter oil, you need to follow this, kind of the same rules as you would for the engine. If it's sitting out in the cold, you don't want a thick, heavy oil. And the manuals generally cover this pretty well. Uh, you can go down to a 530, or, you know, you can run a straight 30 weight if it's warm outside. Uh, you can run a multi-weight you know, 1040 or 1540 uh, if it's really warm. But if it's really cold and it's been sitting out, you know, again, five degree weather overnight, and you start it up with straight 30 weight, you're going to have some lubrication issues if it warms up. Keep an eye on your oil level. Change it, you know, relatively often if it starts to get discolored. And change it based on weather conditions. If so this will be your oil drain. Here's your sight glass. Remember, anything on the sight glass is sufficient and don't fill above the red dot. Uh, if you get over full, you're really going to have issues with, with pass out in operation. Uh, this vent on this model pops out, and that's your fill hole for the oil. 
when you pop that out. Make sure you get that seated back in there. This one actually has a double O-ring and the first one will snap in. But you need to get it all the way in or you can have some oil seepage out of there under operation. The next big thing that I see is the auto throttle uh, regulator portion and this is actually pressure operated not vacuum so it's pressure out of the pump that determines throttle. This tube can come a little loose. These, this is a push type connector that does cage and you can actually squeeze this in much like a uh, shark bite type fitting or a fuel line type fitting. Out of the box you might check this or if there's been a lot of transport or if you're having trouble with it from the vibration shove that hose and make sure it's shoved in there all the way and then pull back on it until that lip comes out make sure we're tight in there and that's on the pressure side here so this would be the engine throttle side of that same tube and pressure's coming up and actually pushing your throttle lever uh, on the engine so make sure we're tight up here uh, if you're having any issues there the next big thing is operating uh, conditions. Uh, it needs to be on a near level surface, as level as possible. Uh, you can get away with a few degrees of tilt or inclination. Engine manufacturers do publish this for each engine. Remember all these small engines, whether it's lawnmower or anything, until you get up to a large enough engine that it's got an oil filter, these do not actually have an oil pump. They've just got a little splasher in there. So if you get uneven, surface uh, you'll get oil rolled off to one side and you'll, you won't get enough lubrication throughout the engine and that'll cause engine problems. Uh, remember this is probably going to be under full throttle load so if we're not getting lubrication we're going to get engine failure. And the same general rules then would also carry over to the compressor itself. Uh, it can end up oil starved if you're on a steep incline so as level as possible there's usually published in the manuals recommended maximums and it's somewhere around 5 degrees uh, for these and maybe around 15 when you get to an engine that has an actual oil pump so you really need to keep these on a level surface when you run them. So here's this valve and this is the bypass position here so what that means the compressor is turning and it's putting air in but with that valve open it's actually letting that air vent out right there now it holds, continues to hold the pressure that's already in the tank, but the pump itself is not seeing that restriction, that resistance, so we're not putting that load on the engine. And we can see here that we're somewhere around 75 pounds in this tank. So if I cold start this engine and have it in pressure mode, and we just heard the throttle, that pressured the throttle regulator, this is going to rev up to full RPM and be under full load when it's cold. We want to give it you know, just a minute or two to warm up, you know, especially depending if it's five degrees outside, you probably need a five minute warm up. Well, the same thing will apply on shutdown, and we'll see this when I actually take it out and run it here. But you wouldn't pull in in your car and immediately shut off the engine from full throttle. Um, you wouldn't come in yourself to the house after a hard day's work and just go straight to bed without taking some wind down time. So you really want this engine to return to idle before you cut it off. Uh, it's much worse with a carbureted engine, like all these small engines. Uh, you can have backfire, extra fuel flow that gets into the cylinders, and, and over time really shorten the life, uh, besides making it harder to restart. So if we're operating here and we're, we're done for the day and we're ready to shut this down or we're going to lunch break or whatever and we're done with it and we don't want to leave it idling, because uh, remember when it builds pressure it's going to return itself to idle. Before you shut it down, open the bypass valve, let it come back down to idle, uh, you know, give it a minute or two to cool down, then go flip the, the shutoff lever. Now as with any compressor, you're going to get water condensation just from the atmospheric air. Remember all this is doing is taking air from the outside and compressing it and putting it in these tanks. So any humidity uh, is going to end up in the tanks. And if you're running a spray gun, you're probably going to run a filter on it, a water separator. Uh, for a nail gun, not going to be a big issue. Now, if it's misting outside, you can get a whole lot. But if you run this all day, uh, even in relatively dry air, you're going to have some condensation in here. So there's a drain on each of these two tanks. They are cross-connected, uh, so air will flow between them. 
but any water in here is probably going to settle out. So you want to drain them both. Uh, if you're using this heavy, really draining it every day might be a good idea. Uh, if it sits for a week and you left pressure on it, before you go to start it, go ahead and drain them. Uh, more often is better, but how often you must do it or actually should is going to vary a lot depending on hours of use, you know, total amount of air moved and the humidity and temperature. Up underneath here, we can see here's a drain valve for this side and here's a drain valve for this side. Now right now, we're under about 75 pounds of pressure, so we don't want to crank this full open and have all that pressure escape. So you're just going to ease the valve open. And, you know, it, it's going to be loud depending on how much pressure you've got. So how far you open it initially depends on your tolerance for noise level. Uh, you don't have to go full open, though. Then when the pressure has dropped down quite a bit and there's not a whole lot of pressure left, you can come back and open it all the way uh, because you really want it full open for any water to drip out. And with those valves full open, we can tilt the other end to put this end down low and really let that water come out. Now, quick thought here, and this applies to really any small engine. This is a carburetor sitting under here, and as such, it's got a float in there, uh, and those can stick. So when we think about transporting in a vehicle, trailer, whatever, getting bounced around, the odds of that float getting bounced up and then sticking up and causing excess fuel flow into it um, increases. Remember, this is a, a gravity feed and that float is what shuts it off and only allows in what's needed. So there's a fuel shutoff valve on almost all modern small engines. If you're going to transport it, go ahead and close the valve. And if that float were to get banged around, you're not going to get excess fuel flow uh, build up in the carburetor. So what will happen if that if that does occur and you've got the valve open is you'll end up with excess gas into the engine into the cylinder and when you go to start it at the job site it's going to be very tough to start it's going to be completely flooded